How much was that bag, baby? Huh? Two fifty. Huh? It's about, it's about five dollars. Hey, folks, how's everybody doing today? Hope you're doing well. We just got back from the market. Ooh, it looks like I'm down to one. Sing high. I got one torpedo left, and that tube is flooded. And I forced you get his juice right there in reach. Oh, I got some beers peeking out back here. Visit my liquor. What? Oh no, there's no food in my ref. Let's check up here. Oh my goodness, there's no frozen burritos. There's no frozen TV dinners in my refrigerator. What will I do? I wanted to do a video because, uh, you know, I've shut up my refrigerator several times, and especially when we were over in Angeles City. You know, it was a video of, I said something about doomsday preppers. And I got a lot of uh, comments, commentary about, you got no food in that ref, there's nothing but beer in there. And it cracked me up, it really did. And I understand it because most of you guys and gals out there are from the West. A lot of you have never traveled outside the West, outside the United States. You, you don't have a passport. You've never been to another country, experienced another culture, or um, the way people do business in other places on the globe. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do a video, and I'm going to call it Why There's No Food in My Refrigerator, The Honest Truth. <laughs> And folks, look, I'm not the type of person that feels like I have to explain myself to anyone. That's not me. Unless there's something to be learned from the story. So I see, you know, when all these folks are hitting me about not having any food in the ref, and I just let it go for the entertainment value. But it's time to educate everybody who looks at my refrigerator and says, there's no food in there, but there's booze. You're, you're a sorry bastard. You can think what you want, but let me educate you on how other cultures do business. And that's the purpose of this video. So thanks for joining me today. If you're not a subscriber on my channel, okay, smash that overstay road sign in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Ring that bell. I'm gonna ring that bell. Yo, Adrian, it's me, Rocky. Anyhow, ring the bell so you know when I post a video. All right, I'm gonna open up my beer. I gotta get to cooking, but later I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna talk to you and I'm gonna tell you exactly why I have no food in my refrigerator. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this little bag here. So folks, the prices that we're paying over here in uh, downtown, uptown Barreto, is obviously a lot more expensive than what we were paying at that, uh, that market over in Angeles. Oh my goodness, we were getting great prices over there but it's not where we're at right now so we got uh some potatoes a couple of carrots some onions and some lemons oh that's about five dollars it's a true five dollars because transportation costs were zero we walked okay so when you say oh i paid this at the market most people don't factor in their transportation costs right all right, I took uh, my blue suede shoes and me and the old lady forced you went to the market. So that's like a true true $5 right there. We're gonna get, uh, you know, say two meals out of that at least. And so you look 250 a meal on our vegetables. Folks I, got to, folks, I got to drinking last night and I made way too many noodles, way too many. But I'm not gonna waste them. I'm gonna use these to feed security outside, my street dogs. Oh, whoa! A coconut chopper. Hell yeah! Let's see what she'll do on a tater. Baby, you look beautiful today. My goodness, got the Daisy Dukes on. 
chopping up the chicken like a champion. I'm not making a big, big pot tonight, folks. That was one carrot. What, two potatoes? Oh, uh, one big onion? And two pieces of chicken right here. Just one? That's only one? Yeah. All right. Fixing to go into large 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker on my little Sonic camping grill. Out of here. A little bit of olive oil going in there. Love cooking with olive oil. And then, look what's staring me in the face. The McCormick taco mix. Chicken, taco mix, holy, hold the presses. This may not be a soup night. What do we got over here? Next to the Jamaica lime juice. Oh yeah, super soft tortillas. Check it out. All right, got them things crisp, crisp it up. Oh yeah, fajita night, my goodness. Got a few jalapenos left, but I got the juice, so I did, either way, it's gonna be delicious. Baby, take a smell of that. Tell me what you think of that. What does it smell like, baby? What does it smell like, baby? It smell like, smell like a Mexican restaurant? Huh? It's not spicy. There's nothing in there that's spicy. My goodness. My food is Forest G approved. My son loves my cooking. Look at him go. My goodness. So here I go, folks. Let me, let me show you a better look at this. Look at that. Look at that right there. That is absolute deliciousness going on that tortilla. Look at that. Check that out right there. My goodness, absolutely, absolutely delicious. Wow. Mm. I amaze myself. Hey folks, good morning. It's a beautiful morning here. Done, really hadn't come up yet. Just listening to my roosters crowing, the birds chirping. Dogs barking. I don't see no chipmunks. But I do got some chicken feathers in my yard. And I ain't got chickens. I don't know how that happened. Just getting up and around. Get me a, get me a cold beer. Start out the day. Might give me some coffee in a few seconds. But I'm going to explain to you why there's no food in the refrigerator. There's background noise. Just got to deal with it. It's the Philippines. Now, actually, this new place over here is so quiet. It really is. Compared to most places I've lived here, uh, this place is quiet. There's no trikes coming by in the middle of the night waking me up. Just the sounds of nature. Love it. Uh, Alright, where do I start? You know. Okay, look, I'm from America. I'm from the West. I was used to, I don't want to say typical, because that's, everybody's situation is different. But what I would do, hey, every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whenever, I go to the grocery store, I load up a big, huge cart full of stuff, full of food, frozen food, um, bring that stuff back home, put it in my huge side-by-side -side ref, make sure that thing's packed to the gills. Make sure the pantry is packed to the gills. Um, you know, in case there's an ice storm in Georgia in the summer. <laughs> you know, that's the way a lot of a uh, lot of us Americans shop, right? And we, we don't we don't just we don't go to the store every day. We go uh, once a week, twice a week, and we load up big, load up the whole trunk of that car take it home, put it in our big ass refrigerator, stock up our extra freezers that we have in case the zombie apocalypse comes. All right, other cultures don't shop like that. All right, they don't shop like that. That's not the way they do business for several reasons. So 
I don't. I'm gonna try to tell the story chronolo in chronological order. I actually have some notes here, but let me just start out, okay? When I married my Thai wife, I used to be married to a girl from Thailand. And I first went to her family's house. Now, they didn't live way out in the village, like 50 miles families from. They, they lived sort of outskirts of a small town. They didn't use a refrigerator. They had a little tiny one, you know, one of them little like mini bar types sitting over in the corner, but it was unplugged. They didn't use it. And I was like, why don't you plug the refrigerator in? Use the refrigerator, right? You know, I'm thinking in American sense still. And my Thai wife just kind of looked at me crazy like, why? What? You know, it costs extra electricity. <laughs> I'm like, well, why do you have the ref? So anyhow, you quickly learn here in Southeast Asia, people don't go to Walmart once a week in their SUV and load up on $300 worth of groceries and bring it home and put it in their big ass ref. Why? Number one, they don't have an SUV. Number two, they don't have $300 to go spend at one time on groceries. Number three, they don't have the money to buy a big old refrigerator. So that's not the way the culture works. You know, my Thai wife's family, her mother, she got up every morning very early and went to the market every day. That's just the way they shop. They buy enough food for, to prepare that day's meals and nothing else. And that's the, that's the routine. Because a lot of people in this region don't have that lump sum of money to be a doomsday prepper. They have money day by day you know the trike drivers they make money day by day they don't make money by the week or by the month GP drivers you know folks working in the uh, sugarcane fields and stuff it's more of a day by day uh, planning horizon so my Thai wife uh, they didn't use the ref until I show up and I said well look I got it I gotta keep my beard cold. I want some cold beer at night. So, you know, reluctantly went over there, plugged in the refrigerator for the foreign guy and stocked it with some beer. That's it. If she goes to the market, buys a fish, it gets cooked that day, it's consumed, there are no leftovers. Especially in Thailand. Thai people love fresh food. Thailand is the best culinary scene in the world. I got used to that. Um, in Thailand, I ate no leftovers, period. So it's, you understand it's a day-by-day -day flow. Mom goes to the market in the morning, cooks that food throughout the day. That's what they eat. The next day, the cycle repeats itself. No need for a ref. Only time they used the ref was when I would come show up there. They plug it in, put me some cold beer, so if I wake up at 2 in the morning, I can get a cold one. So that's point number one. Now, I asked Fatima and Janice, I said, you know, do your families have refrigerators? <clears throat> and Janice said her family has a small ref, but Fatima's family still doesn't have a ref. You know, they have electricity in the village, but there's only a handful of people in Fatima's village that owns a refrigerator. It's the same cycle. Everybody goes to the market every day they cook those vegetables and meat and fish that day. The food is consumed and the cycle starts restarts itself the next day. You bastards, why don't you buy them a big old refrigerator? Folks, you're trying to change culture. I purchased, uh, we gave her family some appliances, electrical appliances. They don't use them because it runs up the light bill. That's not what they're used to. We gave them a big old rice cooker. They still cook over wood in a pot. The rice cooker just sits there. So understand, different cultures do different things, and you can try to intervene, and they're not going to use it. I mean, if I bought them a huge refrigerator, probably wouldn't get plugged in. Never had one, never used one. You know, here you come, the foreign dude, to save the day and buy them a refrigerator. <laughs> eh might not get plugged in.
so let's just keep moving along here. You know, I think going to the market every day too, it's also a gathering place to see what's going on and uh, to see the prices. The prices fluctuate, so you get a better deal this day and this day. It's a social scene. It's a, it really is. It's a social scene going to the market and interacting with people and see what's happening. Now, uh, the purpose of this video is to tell you why I don't have any food. All right, I've, I've been over here just approximately one decade in Southeast Asia. And not that I follow every custom or tradition or anything like that. No, I'm, I'm an American, but certain things I have gravitated to. And one of them being going to the market every day. I like going to the market, you know, seeing what's happening. And so there's no, for me, there's no need for me to have a refrigerator. I go to the market every day. Now that's kind of foreign for a lot of people in the States because you got to get in your car, you know, drive however many miles, spend gas money, what have you. But just going to a little market here, it's a, it's a walk. I mean, it, I can walk a few, a uh, few minutes and I'm at a market. So it's not as big of a deal as being in the West and having to saddle up, spend gas money, all that stuff. So just by living here, um, you know, I've changed my American ways of going out once a week and buying this huge ass stockpile of stuff for the most part. And I just go to the market every day like the locals do. That's why you don't see a ton of food in my refrigerator. At the beginning of this video, we went to the market, bought enough food for two meals, brought it back, we'll do the same thing today. So why is there no food in the ref? <laughs> it's just the way business is done. Number two, I don't eat frozen food. When I left America and moved to Thailand, and since I've been over here kicking it around in the Philippines, Folks, I don't eat frozen food. We don't buy frozen stuff and put in that freezer. None. Zero. Refrigeration in this region is still coming up, right? Um, I'm not saying there's not refrigeration or there's not refrigerated warehouses, but it's not like in the States where you know half the stuff you buy is frozen. Yes, you can go to Fresh Options. They have half is the frozen stuff. Hardly anybody buys that crap. Because when you leave the West, people aren't as big on eating frozen food, frozen burritos, frozen pizzas. I don't want to eat that shit. I don't want to eat anything frozen. I want to eat fresh vegetables, fresh meat, and you can keep your, your frozen shit. I mean, we'll buy a few extra pieces of chicken or pork and put up there and freeze just, you know, to have, but... That freezer is basically for making ice. I don't eat frozen food. I don't want to eat no fucking frozen food. That shit's killing you. Look at all the shit they put in there, right? So that kind of eliminates my freezer. Why do I have a freezer? Making ice. So I can make a rum and coke. <laughs> my old lady doesn't want to eat any frozen food. Now she did scam some nasty bacon one time, but we don't eat frozen food all right dairy products people in southeast asia folks over here don't eat a lot of dairy products like butter cheese milk all of that stuff that re requires refrigeration so why I plug in a refrigerator and run up the light bill just don't eat a lot of dairy products you know, I, since I found the good butter over at Angel's Bakery, I always keep good butter in stock because I like to cook with butter. Uh, occasionally, we'll get some milk. Uh, occasionally, cheese because cheese is a premium over here. So it's a premium. So we don't eat a lot of cheese because it's expensive. So I'm painting you a picture about okay, fresh vegetables every day, fresh meat. We don't eat frozen food, 
don't eat a lot of dairy products, all of a sudden you're eliminating the need for a refrigerator. You know, I do like a cold beer and I'm very appreciative that I have a ref. I'm glad I bought a ref just for certain little items. But one of them is so I can keep a cold beer. All right, moving right along. See if I got some more notes here. All right, the more food that you keep around, the more you're gonna eat. <laughs> I mean, you know, my ladies aren't used to having all these snacks growing up and all that stuff. So if my Ma goes out and buys like three bags of cookies, a couple bags of chips, they're munching that shit constantly. It's gone quickly. So it's like the more food that you keep around, I think it's just human nature, the more you're gonna eat, the more you're gonna snack, and the fatter you're gonna get. Why do you think our society in America is the fattest in the world? Because we got, we got an overabundance of food, uh, easy access to it, big old refrigerators, big old pantries, and we keep them stocked. You know, got plenty of free food over there, and you just keep eating and eating and eating because it's readily accessible. I'd say the average American, you know, they probably got, what, three months of food in their house? Really, if you get to come down to it, they could, they could, they got three months of food in their house and they got about, about a year's worth of food around their midsection. You know that show alone? Theoretically on a loan, the fattest fucker that goes on that show is going to win. Why? Because he's carrying around 50, 100, 150 pounds worth of food stocks on his body in the form of fat. So it's a definite unfair advantage uh, if a fat guy goes on that show alone. As long as he don't quit, theoretically he should win. So take a dude that's 150 pounds and a guy that's 300 pounds. They should let that 150 pound guy carry 150 pounds worth of food just to make it fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> just because the you know the fat guy don't have this food in a backpack, uh, you know it's underneath his skin, ready to go. He don't even gotta eat it. He should win every time on a loan as long as they don't quit. The fattest person that goes theoretically by science should win. So why keep a ton of ton of food around the house when it's just gonna make my ladies fatter? They're a few blocks from the market. They can go to the market every day, get what they want, cook. But if you just start shoving that shit in here like a doomsday prepper, it just adds pounds to people's asses unnecessarily. Okay. All right, so I talked about, you know, uh, when, when you don't, when, how do I say this? Okay, a lot of folks here in Southeast Asia, they don't, they don't have the money to go out and stock a ref. Maybe I said that earlier. They don't have the funds to do that. Even if they wanted to do that, they don't have the money to go out and fill up a big ass refrigerator. And everybody here lives fine, right? Even in the heyday of this uh, uh, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, folks, food was readily accessible and available at the markets, even in the middle of this shutdown, lockdowns, what have you. So, even when this zombie apocalypse came upon us, yeah, we did a little bit of prepping, a little bit of stocking up. Turns out there was no need. Yes, it's better to be prepared. Yes, we do keep some emergency food rations, but not in the form of fucking frozen food and stocking up that ref. Okay, let's see, what are the notes I got here? Um... You know, and then for the most part, I'm a minimalist. And it means people interpret that in several different ways. But for me, it just means getting rid of unnecessary shit. That's one element of it. It's just getting rid of unnecessary shit and waste. Um, and I think that's just another, another factor. But it, it boils down to, folks, the, the culture here in Southeast Asia, 
is to not to go to Sam's Club and and stock up $300 worth of groceries. It's just to go to the market every day. And that's what we do. So that's when you look at my ref and there's no food in there, nothing but beer and juice and and ice and stuff like that. That's the, that's the main purpose of us having a refrigerator because we really don't have to have one. We stayed in the $28 beach condo. We didn't have a ref. I just had a little beer cooler. Why? Because we're three minutes walking distance to the market. And that's what we do every day because that's what the culture does. So I hope this little 20 minute talk, I know it's a little rambling, a little bit repetitive, but that's what happens because I don't write a script. You know, a lot of people on YouTube, they write a script. I don't know if you realize this or not, but they sit down and spend six hours writing a script, getting it all, you know, straightened out. So all they have to do is sit there and just read and be a talking head on the script that they've written. Hey, it makes for a great flow. They're not repetitive and they stay on target and all that. I don't want to work that hard. I don't want to spend six hours writing a fucking script and I'm gonna say the same shit that I'm gonna say. I made some notes right there, it probably took me 10, 15 minutes, and hell, I didn't even, I just browsed over them. I left out half what I put in the notes. So yeah, so if it's repetitive, it's cause this shit ain't scripted, it's just what, whatever comes to mind when I'm talking to this camera here and talking to you guys. So there you go. So anybody who thinks that, uh, you know, I'm a cheap bastard by not keeping my refrigerator stocked like a like an American prepper. It's just a difference in culture. It's a difference in culture. If I moved back to the States, I would go back to American culture because I would have to get in my car, go to the grocery stores. I'd be just like most people in America, you know, big old refrigerator, maybe a little side freezer and a big old pantry and keep it stocked, right? But over here, it's just a different way of doing business. Um, I just make a side note, you know, I eat so much better over here on this side of the world, I really do, oh my god, if I came back to the States, I, I couldn't go back to eating that frozen shit, uh, eating shit out of a can, my goodness, couldn't, couldn't go back to eating that way, what do I talk about cooking? It's, it's vegetables, meat, a little heat, and some spice. That's it. That's the way I like to cook. Don't call for getting something out of the freezer or ripping into a damn tin can. It's just not the way I want to eat. All right, folks. Thanks for joining me on this talk. If you're not a subscriber, hit that sign right there and ring that bell. Certainly appreciate it and a shout out to everybody who's already done so. Thanks for being a subscriber here on our channel. We'll see you guys on the next one.